I'm making this video to show you how I did the problem on page 49 in the Abu Badr stats book. Okay, so first of all, I entered all the data, and it did take me a while, but there's all the data. So now we're going to transfer this over to SPSS. First thing, we open up a new SPSS file, nice and clean. So his number one is create a new SPSS data file in the variable view screen. Define each variable's name, its type, decimals, labels, values, and its measure. Okay. So you'll notice there's two tabs down here. Data view, that's where the numbers go. Variable view, that's where we're going to describe the variables. So let's get the names of the variables. And... These are the names of the variables, okay? So I'm going to show you some tricks here. We're going to go all the way to the right. We're going to copy. I'm going to open up a new sheet down here, and I'm going to paste transpose. So this is a huge help. It changes rows into columns and columns into rows. It's very helpful. And I'm simply going to copy these and paste them into SPSS. Now, you guys with Macs, you might have problems. Um, but you'll figure it out. Boom. So we did all the names and it put all this stuff in here automatically. We're going to fix these up. So the types of variables. Number is just a number. D1, D2, let's let's go ahead and put the labels in there a second. Labels basically describes what they really are. So let's flip back to the SPS, I'm sorry, the Excel. That's These are going to be the labels, right? The age, ethnicity, health, blah, blah, blah. So hold on a second, and you don't need to see this. I'm going to try to make this video as short as possible. So the first one would be number it's just like an id number so let's just call it id number and the second one is age and now i will pause the video and simply type in the rest of those all right so it was the naming part is the under the names of the variables that's the one that has all the, the funny rules where you cannot start with a blank, you cannot start with a number, no periods, no decimals, no nothing in here. It will take underscores, won't take hyphens, but the naming of the variable is is problematic usually. Uh, but in the labels column, you can put anything you want here. So these questions are all self-esteem. So there's 10 separate questions in here measuring a person's self-esteem. Now we're going to identify the type of variable that's under measures, right? That tells you if it's a scale, which is continuous, ordinal, or nominal, which is categorical. So the, for the ID number, it really doesn't matter what it is. Let's just call it a scale. We're not going to use it. Age is a scale or continuous number, right? Because somebody can be 27 and a half years old. Remember, scale or continuous numbers has fractions and decimals. And then gender is a categorical variable. Puts them in one group or another. Ethnicity is the same thing. Puts them in one group or another. And you guys saw that, right? It all changed by itself. It does that. U.S. born is a yes or no, so that's a nominal, right? It puts them in a category of yes, category or no. no. And then health. Health. Let's take a look at health. Health is 1 to 5. It's a liquor scale. Liquor scales are ordinal. So we're going to make health ordinal. And then let's take a look at education. I think education is exactly the same. It has, what does it? Yeah, education, it goes from high school, college degree, graduate degree. So that, that is a rank, right? That's a ranking order. So that makes it a an ordinal as well. Now, with health and education, uh, ordinal, you can make uh, no, as nominal variables. It's not a big deal. There are a few analyses in SPSS that will give you an error message if you don't have to mark properly, but we're not going to worry about that. Now, the rest of these are all ordinal. Okay, so let's take a quick look at those guys. And, right, so one strongly disagree all the way down to four agree. That, again, is a liquor scale, which makes them ordinal. So let me change all these to ordinal, ordinal. 
and I'm going to show you a shortcut again here. You can only copy as many as you've already made. That's a little bit of a pain in the neck, but it's doable. Okay, so we have identified all the types. So now we're going to go ahead and cut the, the data from the Excel sheet to the SPSS sheet with some few changes. These are kind of uh, strange, but anything that is a text measured in text, which is gender, ethnicity, U.S. born, health, and education, you'll notice those aren't numbers, those are letters. We have to go back in SPSS and change their uh, numeric Let's get this in here, right? They're, they're listed as numeric, but they're actually going to be a text. A text in SPSS is called a string. So that is D2 through D6. So D2 through D6, we have to change to string. If not, it will not carry over the data. If they're marked as numeric and you try to put text in there, it won't let you put text in there. So just... Bear with me here. String, 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 string. In fact, I'm going to cut and paste these separately because I don't trust SPSS here. All right, so two through six, they're marked as strings. Now, we should save this. Save it frequently, you guys. That's all I could say. And let's put this in our classroom. Uh, 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 uh. And okay, so I'm making this the, we'll just call this the Abu Beater. Page 49. And we'll save it. Boom. So I'm going to do these one column at a time because I, again, I. Trust SPSS about as far as I can throw it. <laughs> okay, there's us. So I'll get the first, let me get the first two columns, their numbers, right? Their numeric. Copy. So whenever you're pasting into SPSS data wise, you're always going to put that in the data view. Data view, this is the numbers. And this guy's got, uh, you know, a, a few text ones in there, but we'll put those in there. So usually you can just pick one, just like an Excel, cut and paste, and it does it automatic. Look at that. Yeah. So now let's get the other variables. We're going to get the six text variables. And there they are right there. One, two, three, four, five, six. All the way down. Copy. Same thing. Pick the first cell at the top. Make sure you're on the top row because it doesn't do it automatically. All right, we got the text. Good. Now we should be able to get the rest on their own. So let's get the ease. And copy. Boom. We're good to go. All right, we did it all. But uh, so the decimals, he wants us to fix the decimals. None of our original variables have decimals, so we're gonna take the, all the decimals out of them. So there's the decimals column. Uh, again, they just it should just go down to zero, zero, zero. And you don't need to see this. I'm gonna pause this video. All right, that should have got rid of our zeros. Uh, yep, look at all them zeros. Gone. So that takes care of that. So what I personally am going to do, we're going we're gonna to change these text variables into number variables. So let me show you. So F is female, M is male. Be careful, SPSS is, is sensitive to capitals. So watch how we do this. We're going to go to transform. We're going to recode into the same variable. And we're going to take the gender variable, 2, and we're going to add old and new values. So if it was a capital F, we're going to mark it with the number 1. 
add. If it was a little m, we're going to change it to the number 2, add. So 1 means female, 2 means male. Click continue. It should have changed them all. And let's go back to the data. And it did, right? Boom. But it's still marked as a text. Right? That's what that little A means in the bubbles. So we're going to change this to numeric. And now we're going to give those numbers values. So that's what the value column is all about. So for gender, the value for gender, one is female. Add two is male. Add. So now we have, right, all we got is ones and twos. Again, one means something, two means something else. We're going to do that for all of these. So let me go to ethnicity. Let's see what they've got on the ethnicity. There's ethnicity. So we got uh, M-E, and I think that stands for Middle Eastern. A-F is African. And there's a third one in there somewhere. Uh, 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 uh. A-S is Asian. Okay, so we only have three. So let's go back, and we're, we're going to convert this variable from text to numeric. Transform recode into the same variable. Out with the gender, in with the ethnicity. We're going to change the values. So let me get this on the screen this time. Okay, so M-E. Oh, we got to get rid of the old ones. Sorry, my bad. But M-E, little M, little E stands for, is going to be a 1. And then A-F, we'll just make a 2. Add, and then A-S, we'll make a 3. Add, continue, OK. And don't forget to go back to this guy, and we're going to change ethnicity to numeric. And now we're going to add the values of what each number meant. So number one stood for Middle Eastern. Number two was African. And number three was Asian. Right, we're identifying them all, and it is a nominal variable. Okay, so the U.S. born is yes or no. Let me let me do that real quick. So yes or no, we're going to go to transform, recode into the same variable, out with ethnicity, in with U.S. born, and old and new. Get, get rid of the old ones first. I apologize. But let's make uh, let's make yes a one. Other way around. See that? My dyslexia. We're gonna make yes, which was marked with a Y. We're gonna make that a one. Add and then no with an N, little N was a two. Add continue. Okay. Back to the data sheet. So we're going to change the string into numeric. And we're going to add the values. Right? One was yes. And two was no. So this naming is basically arbitrary. You can make it whatever you want. I mean, I could have made one no and two yes. I could have made zero no. I could have made yes number 45. Whatever numbers you want is fine with me. Okay, boom. And make sure it is that. So now the health one, let's do the health. So the health is, okay, one through five. So one is very poor, VP for very poor, P for poor, F for fair, G for good. Okay, so that's one, two, three, four, five. Okay, let's do that. Boom. Again, we're going to go to transform, recode into the same variable. Out with you, and then let's get their health in there. 
old and new, get rid of the old ones. So, very P, VP, was very poor. Blech, it means they're not healthy. We'll mark them with a one. And then poor means a two. And F was fair. We'll make that the three number. And G for good. We'll give them the four. And last is VG. Very good. We'll make them a five. And make sure you got them all. One, two, three, four, five. Yes, you do. Boom. And we click OK. Back to the data. And again, we should we should probably label these, right? So one was very poor. Two was poor. Three was fair. Four was good. And five was like me. Very good. I feel very good. Thank you very much. Add good. Okay. And education level. Uh, oh, yeah. We forgot to change the string to numeric. Uh, uh, uh. All right. I still got my values here. Let's make sure it didn't delete anybody here. Boop, 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 boop. Um, oh no, that, that's us right there. Boom. That's good. So this one is education. GD is graduate. HS is high school. CD is college. Okay, so last one. We're going to go to recode into the same variable. Out with you. In with you. Old and new. Get rid of the old ones. Let's put the new ones in there. So HS is high school. We'll make them a one. And CD, college degree, we'll make them a two. And then the graduate degree, GD, we're going to make a three. And one, two, three, we're good to go. Okay. Back. And back to the variable view. So again, make sure you switch a string back into numeric. SPSS won't do anything with strings, right? It will not process any any text whatsoever. So but we're going to put them in here. We're going to put one is high school. I went to high school. Two college degree. I got a college degree. Three graduate degree. I got a graduate degree. We got a lot of degrees. It's like a sunny day. <laughs> a little humor there. Okay, boom, 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 boom. And it's nominal. Okay, so we did all of the recoding. So there should be no more text. Let's just double check. And I don't see any letters in there whatsoever. So mission accomplished. So now it says check for missing data. I can see I screwed up one. There's a blank spot right there. Boom. So uh, a good tool is if, if you got a blank spot, you can just leave it blank. That's what I usually do. Uh, if there's a lot of them, one trick is to substitute all the missing values with the average of whatever that variable is. Some teachers will jump on you for that. Some won't. So, but just, I'm just going to leave it blank. So the next thing he wants us to do is to run a Chromebacks Alpha of all things, which is kind of sophisticated at this level, but we're going to do it anyway. So the theory is that E1 through E10, all of these questions here, measure a person's self-esteem. So... Let's take somebody with high self-esteem. So if, if these guys are all being measured positively, every question could be measured positively or negatively. Example, how much do you love chocolate ice cream? One, I hate it. Or, you know, one, I strongly disagree. Two, I disagree. Three, I'm neutral. Four, I agree. Five, I strongly agree. Right? If you love chocolate ice cream, you would pick a five. But you could also measure 
negatively. So, and that, that example would be, how much do you hate chocolate ice cream? And I would pick one because I would strongly disagree because chocolate is, of course, the best of all flavors. So that's positive and negative, and we're going to reverse code some of these right now. But he wants us to run a Chromebax Alpha with all 10 of these. So I let me show you what that means. Chromebax Alpha takes those questions that are measuring the same thing, and it basically runs a correlation table to it. So I'm going to show you the correlation table first. He doesn't want you to do that, but I'm going to show them to you. And if, if they're all being measured the same way, by that I mean either positively or negatively, then they should be answered similarly, and they should all have very, very strong correlations. Um, but you'll notice they don't. Some are positive, some are negative. So that means you're going to have to reverse code a lot of questions. I thought I'd just throw that in there. But now we're going to run a Chromebox Alpha. We're going to go to Analyze, down to Scale, Reliability. The reliability of a test is basically that, um, it's like it sounds, the survey is reliable. In other words, those questions that are measuring the same thing should be correlated the same. And it's going to give us a Chromebox Alpha number. We go to statistics. We take, we always click the top three. One, two, three. And then we click continue down here on the bottom. So an acceptable Chromebox Alpha, there's an okay off screen. I don't think you can see it. We click okay. An acceptable Chromebox Alpha is normally about 0.7 or above. Okay. At our school, we take 0.7. Other schools is 0 0.6, other schools is 0 0.8. So, but this is negative. That's bad. That's very, very bad. So what happened was in his instructions, we were supposed to reverse code some of those questions. So let me show you which ones we're going to reverse code. I marked them in red. So we're going to reverse code 2, 5, 6, 8, 9. Remember that. 2, 5, 6, 8, 9. So they go 1 through 4. So we're gonna repeat. We're gonna re we're gonna reverse those. So if they picked a one, we're gonna change it to a four. If they picked the a two, we're gonna change it to a three, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So let me show you. Two, five, six, eight, nine. Two, five, six, eight, nine. So we're gonna go to two, five, six, eight, nine. Da, 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 da. We're gonna go to. Let's go to transform again. Hold on. Hold on. This thing's being weird here. Boom. Now you could do these you could do these statistics from either the output page or the or the data page it doesn't make a difference. But we're going to go to transform recode into the same variable again. Out with you. And what was it? 2 5 Oops, hold on. 2 5 6 8 Nine and I already forgot. Let's make sure two five six eight nine two five six eight nine two five six eight nine. Okay, so we're gonna reverse code those. Okay, so here we go. Oh. Uh, so if it was a one in the old one, it'll be a four in the new one. Add an old two will go to a new three. Add an old three goes to a new two. Add, and an old four goes to a new one. Add, click OK, click OK again. Let's look at the data sheet. And so we'd reverse coded them for us. But now, very important, what I always make my students do is once you recode it, you mark it with an R, just a little R. Right, so E2, E5, E6. E8, E9. So if you come back to the sheet, which a lot of times you will, you know that you've already reverse coded these. So now he wants us to run the Chromebox Alpha again. Go to Analyze, down to Scale, Chromebox Alpha, get in there. You Reliability, right? That's the reliability. And the numbers are already in there, and they've already been reverse coded. Very good. And OK down here at the bottom. Boom. And bam. So the Chromebox Alpha is perfect, right? It's 0.854. That means that means all 10 of these questions are good at measuring self-esteem. And they're all going the same direction, either positive or negative. And since I can't see the questions, I don't know, you know, the higher the number, the, the stronger the self-esteem, or the higher the number, the weaker the self-esteem. It really doesn't matter in statistics which way you go, positive or negative. But let's just assume the higher the number, the higher the self-esteem. 
So the last thing he wants is charts and graphs of how the data was answered, the frequency tables and graphs. So that's easy. We're simply going to go to analyze descriptive statistics, frequencies, and so continuous variables. We don't do bar graphs with continuous variables. We use histograms for the continuous variables, but everything else, uh, the nominals and the ordinals, we can kick in there. Boom. And let's slide this over so you can see it. And you, you click on the charts. You click on the bar charts. It automatically sticks in tables or for you. Very, very nice. Now, if you, if you haven't reset your computer to put out APA formatting with your output of your SPSS, which only takes a second. I can show you that if you want. But um, you can click that box. It'll do it for you. But we don't need to do that because I've already got it. So you just click OK. Give it a second. And it tells you all the variables, how many are missing. So that one in education I missed, sue me. But then it puts them here. So here's all the frequency tables already APA formatted. Put those in your appendices if you want. But it tells you how many, gives you the percentages, et cetera, et cetera. And then down on the bottom of these, you're going to get the bar graphs of each one. So there's your gender, there's your ethnicity, there's their U.S. born, there's their health. You know, most of these guys are not feeling very good. That's that's pretty bad. So most of these guys had high school and whatever whatever they're measuring here. These are all the uh, survey questions. So, and again, we're not asking what they're doing. But it looks like most of these people have pretty much high self-esteem. So that's about it. All right. I hope this video helped. I know it was kind of long and boring, but I figured we'd, you know, we'd show you how to do this thing just in case. Okay. All right. MGZ out.